metropolitan area. In the eastern part of the valley lies the city of Mesa, which is our destination for tonight's meeting. Our featured speaker for tonight, Jerry Rogan, makes his winter home in Mesa and in the Sunland Springs Village active adult community there. Mr. Rogan's topic this evening is Apple and other health apps. Let me tell you a little about Jerry's background. Jerry Rogan served in the United States Air Force as a software engineer. And after leaving the service, he started an industrial software company specializing in maintenance management. He later sold that company, but continued on as his national sales manager. Jerry subsequently became CEO of an industrial software company until his retirement. Jerry is currently president of the Sunland Springs Village Technology Group. We're now ready to be teleported to Mesa, Arizona, and Sheila Bigel, our teleportation navigator and engineer, is going to take us there. So, Sheila, on my count, down from five, four, three, two, one, now. <laughs> That was great, Jerry. I appreciate it. Arizona. The local yeah. time here is a few minutes past five in the afternoon, which is Mountain Standard Time. And looking out, I see that it's sunny and the outdoor temperature is uh, 67 degrees. So, Jerry, the microphone is yours. All right. Thank you. You did a great job. I could use you out here for my computer club. <laughs> hey, listen, before I get started, I do want to wish all the veterans out there. Happy Veterans Day tomorrow. Um, I know you'll enjoy celebrating it. There are several restaurants out here that are offering free meals and so forth. If you don't mind waiting four hours to get in. So I, I think I'm gonna pass on that part. So anyway, good evening. Um, we're gonna to talk tonight about the Apple Health app that you find on your iPhones. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the Apple Watch because it does tie in very good with that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen and launch uh, my PowerPoint. By the way, uh, the PowerPoint, we get this going. When I'm all through with this, I will be sending a PDF uh, to Sheila, and you may distribute that among your members. It will be a PDF of every slide You'll just be missing my fantastic voice, so, okay? Okay, very good, thank you. All right, let me go ahead and do a few things on my end. All right, well, welcome to Apple Health. The Health app gathers health data from your iPhone, Apple Watch, and apps that you may already use, uh, so you can see all of your progress in one place. It also does work with other watches besides the Apple Watch, so we're gonna cover that. There you go. The health app is a valuable tool in itself, uh, but when combined with the Apple Watch, it, its strength just really, really shines. But we're first going to look at what it can do uh, just using the Apple Watch. Health puts important information at your fingertips, including your health records, medications, labs activity, and sleep. It makes it simple to securely share that information. The key word here is securely share. So we don't need to worry about that. Is your information secure? Yeah, absolutely. The health app is built to keep your data secure and protect your privacy. Your data is encrypted and you're always in control of your health information. Now, that being said, the only other people who can access any part of your health information, and, and I shouldn't say that, they, don't, they can't access any part, they can access limited information uh, should they need to, uh, and that would be the first responders, the firemen, the ambulance attendees, and so forth. If you have an iPhone, even though it's locked, they can access certain information but only that information. So if you look at the screen, you'll see uh, I've got a Michael Cavan on there, gives his age, 
his medical condition, if he has any allergies and reactions, any medications he might be on, his blood type, his weight, his height, and the emergency contacts. That's all the EMS people will be able to see. Now they may be able to scroll up another screen if you've got a long list of medications and so forth, but basically it's so they can administer whatever help they need if you're down on flat on your back or whatever may have happened. That is the only information that is shareable without them knowing your passwords or anything. And by the way, uh, I'll talk about it later. Yeah, but they do, you do can get a list of your emergency contacts. Uh, for example, I've got uh, my two children and, and my partner listed. They will all three be notified that something has happened to me should I be unconscious. What data can Apple Health track? Well, for beginners, they can track your activity. How far you've walked, how many steps, how many calories you've burned, that all that physical sort of thing. Uh, you can track your body measurements. I get a kick out of this one, cycle tracking. I think most of us over 60, 65, 70, 75 in my case, we, we're not real interested in becoming pregnant. So cycle tracking doesn't mean anything to us. But you can also track hearing. And I found last night, I was playing cards with a group of people and we were telling jokes and so forth. And I guess we must have got a little loud because my iPhone came up with a warning saying, you may need to put earplugs on, you're in a high noise area. So it warns you of things like that. There's hard things that are tracked, mindfulness, mobility, nutrition, respiratory, and if you look on the right, you can also track your sleep, any symptoms you might have, your vitals and other data. That's a lot just on your phone. And I haven't figured it out yet, but for some reason, if I don't use my watch, I just use my phone and I set it on my charger at nighttime. For some reason, it knows when I get in bed, when I go to sleep, when I wake up and when I get out of bed. I haven't figured that out yet, so. Okay, other things that will track are all of your records, your allergies, your clinical visits, your conditions, your immunizations, your lab results, medications and procedures. And I find it uh, interesting. I do use a fair number of these unconsciously. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go into that in a little bit of how that happens. Now, one of the new features of iOS 16.1 is medical reminders and, and so forth. Your medications are important and health can remind you when they are to be taken on your iPhone and or on your watch. Health also has the capability to monitor harmful drug interactions. And I found that interesting. If you look at the uh, screenshot on the right, it's telling me 9.30 a.m. medications, or I, I don't know how to say that, whatever it is. And it will remind you to take those. And then once you take them, you just click on taken and it records that you've taken that medication and you're good to go. Uh, I have found that, re I used to set an alarm on my watch to go off at three in the afternoon to take a pill. Uh, I would shut the alarm off, say, okay, I'll take it in five minutes. And like you guys, I get tied up and I forget to take it. The medication reminder will continue to bug you in, until you say, yes, I've taken it or I've skipped it. So I think that's a pretty important feature. The other thing is the capability to monitor harmful drug interactions uh, probably like a few of you, I take gabapentin. I was surprised to say that the iPhone came up and warned me that taking gabapentin with alcohol could be a problem. So it, it does work. Uh, 
And I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I kind of ignore that one. So I like my drink once in a while. So, but uh, it does warn you of any drug interactions. It's very good at that. That's medications reminders. And to me, it's one of the important features of the Apple Health app. Now, managing your sleep, this is what I talked about earlier. You can prioritize your sleep by managing your sleep schedule, creating a bedtime routine and seeing how often you're meeting your sleep goals. <clears throat> what, you'll, the, what you see on the screen there, the phone image, is what you will get if you only have an iPhone, if you do not have an Apple Watch. So it'll tell you that you spent seven hours and 58 minutes in bed. Your average time of sleep is seven hours and eight minutes. And again, maybe like some of you, I would be tickled to death if I could sleep seven hours and eight minutes. But, uh, but that's what you'll get on your iPhone. What we're going to look at now is what happens if you also have an Iowa, an Apple Watch, and you wear it when you go to bed. Now, what I do, by the end of the day, I've got all my stands in, and I've got all my exercise in. I'll throw my watch on the charger about an hour before I go to bed so it's charged up. Then I'll put it on when I go to bed. I wake up the next morning and I can look on my watch or on the iPhone and I can see how much deep sleep I've had, how much core sleep I've had, how much REM sleep I've had, wow. and how long I've been awake. Now REM, I, I guess stands for rapid eye movement. I can't begin to tell you how the Apple Watch should determine when I'm blinking in my sleep or not, but it seems to be able to. I have found wearing my watch, and I don't wear it every night, but when I was wearing it regularly, yeah, I wake up in the morning and know whether I slept well or not. This kind of told me how many times I was awake or how many times I thought I was awake. I found that kind of valuable and, and helped me a little bit. So. If you have the watch, you can get this detail. Without the watch, this is what you're going to get. Both can be valuable, especially if you have trouble sleeping. And I don't know too many folks, too many seniors who don't have some kind of sleeping problem. Okay, another, this one's a biggie as well. This is AFib history. If you've been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, AFib history on the Apple Watch can estimate how frequently your heart is in AFib. And in the health app, you can track lifestyle factors that may influence your condition. We're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. But if you look at these two screens, if you've got the watch on, you'll get an AFib history and it'll tell you over the last week, your heart rhythm showed signs of AFib 4% of the time. The previous week was also 4%. Um, and if you look on the right, the, the iPhone screen, uh, you can see how the iPhone health app tracks AFib. So I think that's really critical for senior citizens to be able to, to track that unknowingly. I mean, you're not trying to track it. You're going to be notified if it detects AFib. So basically you're in charge. When you share your information, you have complete control over what you share and the people and institutions you wanna share it with. And you can make changes at any time. This, this Apple Health works with systems doctors already use. Using the record system, your healthcare team can already review data you share. Updated views will let you will let providers see data for topics such as blood glucose, mobility, and all in one place. I happen to share my information. I'm a I'm in the veteran administration system of healthcare, so I've got a, a VA primary doctor, but I also have a civilian primary doctor. They both can share these records so that if I have labs at the VA, they will show up on the Apple Health app. Or if I go to my civilian doctor and have labs, 
my VA doctor can see that and he won't order new labs. If I have a medical procedure done, uh, an unpleasant one, but I just had recently had a colonoscopy by my civilian doctor or a civilian doctor. That almost immediately showed up on Apple Health, so my VA doctor knew what was done. So I think that type of sharing is extremely critical. Now you can search your records instantly. View a timeline of your health history that includes lab results, immunizations, medications, even if the data is from different health institutions. Again, I, we just talked about that. I find that really, really critical. Uh, I just went into Canada this summer and I had to show my uh, co all my COVID vaccinations I've had. I've had five, I think five shots now. I was able to bring that up on my phone and show them at the border and they said, fine, that's all we need. Uh, so it's nice to have that information in your pocket, but it's also nice that it can be shared because all of my shots haven't come from the same source, but yet they all have showed up on the Apple Health app. So beside the Apple Watch, what else works with health? The Garmin Connect, the Polar Flow, the Huawei Health, Samsung Health, not the Galaxy Watch 4. Uh, Withings HealthMate, Whoop, AmazeFit, Upright Go-To Posture Trainer. And if you look to the right, you'll see also Fitbit can work with the Apple Health app. So the Apple Health app, you don't absolutely require the Apple Watch. I think that works the best, but I'm an Apple guy. But there are options. What other systems might you consider? The debate between buying an Apple Watch, a Samsung Galaxy Watch, or a Garmin Watch starts and ends with what type of phone you used. If you own an iPhone, the Apple Watch is the best smartwatch you can get without any doubt. If you use an Android phone, you have more options, but the Galaxy Watch is the first to run a next generation operating system that offers the best of Google's ecosystem of apps and Samsung's wearable technology and performance. The combination of the two make up the best Android-based smartwatch we've seen to date. Not all systems are identical. However, any of these will provide you with medical and health data that can save your life. The bottom line is wearable health solutions exist. They work and they can save your life. There's no question about it. But that first line really tells you everything. The debate between which works best starts and ends with what type of phone you use. Now, let's take a look at the iPhone and Apple Watch integration. And one of the reasons I'm an Apple only guy is because whether I'm on my Macintosh or my phone or my iPad or my watch, it, it, they are all constantly talking to each other. If you're a Samsung, an Android fan, and you're a Samsung fan, all those Samsung devices will talk to each other. And so it's critical to know that. Now, as you can see by this picture, this is my everyday watch face on, on the Apple Watch. And as you, uh, you may or may not know, I can go to my Apple Watch and I can swipe left to right or right to left, and I can change these watch faces as I want. This is my everyday watch face. On this watch face, and I don't think you can see my pointer, but you'll see messages. It's that little green circle. Below that is ECG, EKG. Below that, weather. To the right of weather is activity. Above that is heart rate. And above that is calendar. These things are all, and I don't know where this game name came from either, but they're called complications. And 
these are the ones that I find most important to me. Touching the activity icon in the lower right side of my sc watch screen, I can select from a number of activities, indoor, outdoor walk, golf, dance, outdoor cycle, and that means bicycle, not <laughs> motorcycle, uh, elliptical training, hiking, indoor, uh, outdoor run. I don't do that either. Uh, stair stepper, rower, and many other activities with the results being sent directly from your watch to the Apple Health app. So it keeps track of the activity uh, that you perform. I don't even know how many different activities there are. I think there's well over 100 now. The ones I use are indoor, outdoor walk, golf, dance, and outdoor cycle. Those are the only ones I use. But it'll keep track. And if you look on the center, you'll see this red, blue, and green circles. One of them is for move. The red one is for move, so how many calories you burn in a day. Uh, the green one is for the amount of exercise you got. And the kind of bluish one in the center is how many times you stood up during the day? How many hours did you stood up? I haven't had a watch set for 12 hours. So once I did that room. You can see here, and you, and you can adjust this. So I have my calories set. I want to burn 500 calories a day. Uh, I want to exercise 30 minutes a day. And I want to stand at least for two minutes for at least 12 hours through the day. These are called Apple rings. And, and if you own an Apple watch, you're very familiar with it. If you don't own an Apple watch, uh, you can still track some of that on your iPhone through the activities app. You can also see how many steps you've taken, how far you've walking, walked, I'm sorry, and, and how many flights you've climbed. And I've actually tried that going up and down my basement in Iowa. I don't have a basement in Arizona, but in Iowa. And it, it actually measures that you've gone up and down a flight. Of now, heart rate monitor was right above the, the exercise. Uh, it's the little heart thing. Touching this icon will allow you to monitor your heart rate. It will measure the beats per minute. It will tell you how many minutes ago that was measured. It will tell you your resting rate. It will draw a graph for you. So you can monitor your pulse, basically. When I'm out riding my bicycle in, in Iowa, especially, it's very hilly along the Mississippi River. Uh, if I feel like my pulse is getting too high, I will actually stop on the top of a hill or something and, and watch my heart monitor and wait until it comes down a little bit so I know that I can safely continue. I don't ride a bike to kill myself. I ride a bike for good exercise. So uh, that's the way the heart monitor works. You just, just tap it. It will automatically start measuring your pulse. And I think it's a great health monitoring tool. Across from the pulse monitor, you have the ECG or EKG. Touching this icon will allow you to record your ECG or EKG, which will be transferred to the health app on your phone and then can be shared with your doctor. Now I'm gonna I'll tell you a little story. This summer I was having some chest pains and but it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was a heart attack. Uh, I was also a paramedic. I kind of know what that feels like. Uh, but anyway, so I did an AKG and it didn't say I had AFib and it didn't say I was having a heart attack, but it did say something wasn't right. So I printed out the EKG. I, I didn't print it, I sent it right from my iPhone, I emailed to my doctor. My doctor called me up right away and he said, doesn't look like it's anything to worry about, but I'd like you to come in and have a full EKG here. So I did, I went into the doctor and uh, he did an EKG in his office and he said, yeah, he said, it's exactly as I thought it's called PVC. I think it stands for preliminary cardiac 
something or other. Her preliminary or uh, premature cardiac compression of ventricular or something like that. Anyway, it, it, he said, it's nothing we worry about. Every human being has them. Uh, he told me to get rid of my stress, which would have meant I had to have to kill my kids. I didn't want to do that. But uh, he, and then he also said, get rid of the caffeine. And I went to uh, half calf coffee, half caffeine, half regular. I have not had but one episode in the last six months. So uh, I, he knew what he was doing, but it was the Apple watch that told me what, what I needed to check. So that's an important feature of the Apple watch as far as I'm concerned. Sue had an AFib ablation several years ago and her doctor wanted to implant what's called a watchman. And it's just something that monitors your heart to tell if you're getting AFib again. And she said to her cardiologist, uh, I, I wear an Apple watch all day and all night. And he said, then we don't need to implant this watchman. Just make sure you watch that if you're alerted to, that you have an irregular heartbeat, and want to be notified immediately. So the doctors are starting to fall in line with some of this wearable technology uh, rather than doing in the, rather than implanting foreign objects in your body. They have complete faith in this. <clears throat> anyway, you can you can uh, go to your watch, you can touch the EKG and you just hold the crown on the watch for 30 seconds. You'll see the graph show up. It'll measure the time for you. When you're all done, it will say sinus rhythm or uh, irregular, irregular heartbeat detected, whatever it might be. In this case, it shows sinus rhythm. The ECG does not show signs of atrial fibrillation. And you breathe a sigh of relief and you go on and finish watching your TV show. But this is an important, important feature of the iPhone or the iWatch. And again, once you do it on your watch, it gets transmitted to the Apple Health app on your iPhone. And from that point, you can print it out. You can transmit it to your physician, whatever you want to do. And just to be clear, the ECG that, that the Apple Watch does is not one that's done with all of the various monitors that they may use when they do an EKG in the hospital. It is a preliminary detection tool. And if something shows up, you will more than likely go to either to the hospital or to the doctor to have a full EKG workup done. And we've talked about atrial fibrillation. Uh, it'll show you sinus rhythm or it will tell you that uh, the ECG shows signs of AFib. This is what it looks like on your watch. But you are notified, and, and hopefully you'll, you'll take some action on that notification. Another biggie for us seniors, fall detection. One of Apple's features that seniors should not If you have fallen, your watch will come up and say, it looks like you've taken a hard fall. Do you need emergency SOS services? Or there's another button that says, I fell, but I'm okay. And another button that says, I did not fall. First of all, if you don't touch any of these buttons because you're passed out, I believe it's within 30 or 60 seconds, Apple will call emergency services and send them directly to your location. That's the same thing that will happen if you touch the SOS emergency uh, button. Now, I, have, I haven't fallen, but like I, I would drop a bag of mulch by, my, by a tree, and then I would kind of fall to my knees so I could spread the mulch. I have gotten this message on my phone. And I simply tap, I, I fell, but I'm okay, or I did not fall, and that's the end of it. So again, if you touch the SOS button, or if you don't touch any of the buttons, EMS is gonna show up at your location, whether you want them to or not. The other thing that will happen is your emergency contacts that you've programmed into your health app on the iPhone 
be it your children or brother or whoever it might be, they will also be notified that EMS is on their way to you to assist you. And that all happens automatically. Okay, one of the newer features, again, this depends on what series Apple Watch you have. I believe this started on the Series 7 watch, but you can test your blood oxygen. It's another Apple's features that seniors shouldn't overlook. How to take your blood ox measurement. You make sure your watch is on fairly snug on your wrist. You open the blood oxygen app on your watch. You sit still, make sure your wrist is flat on a, uh, with the Apple watch facing up. And you just keep your arm steady for six to 15 seconds. Wait, the measurement takes 15 seconds. At the end of it, uh, you'll receive the results and tap done. As shown here, it'll say your blood ox is 98%. You say, well, that's great. Get done and, it, and it's over with. Again, another very useful tool, especially for those of you who may be in oxygen or may have a tendency to have your blood ox drop a little bit. Very critical. Now, some of the other watches, while I'm on this, some of the other watches that are out there, I understand Samsung can even do blood pressure uh, now, and Apple can't do that yet. There are some things Apple does that Samsung can't, some things Samsung does that, that uh, vice versa. Uh, I think one of them, somebody told me the Samsung watch can now do uh, blood pressures. Not super accurately, but it does do them to give you an idea of what's going on. Okay. One very important thing to remember, when you complete any of the medical tests, pulse, ECG, EKG, or blood ox, the results are sent to the Apple Health app on your phone. You will have a permanent record for your info, and this can then be shared with your physician. As a matter of fact, much of your activity is also shared with your health application. Additional Apple Watch features, it's a phone. It makes me feel like Dick Tracy every time I talk to somebody on my phone and I, I happen to do it regularly. Uh, it can duplicate your phone notifications. It has the emergency SOS should you need that. You can have audio books, contact, world clock, email, photos, sleep monitor, weather, shock, stock monitor, a tip calculator, uh, podcast, and, and just so many more things. When you buy these things, I always, always tell people, I'm not buying a watch, I'm buying a computer that happens to tell time. So whether you're buying the Samsung or the Fitbit or the Apple Watch, you really are buying a computer. Now, there's a rumor, I happen to be diabetic and I, I, I thought I wasn't going to upgrade my Apple Watch until they came out with this. They're going to be able to measure your blood glucose. Uh, they estimated two or three years, or they estimated two years, and that was a year ago. So I'm hoping next year they come out with this. I have seen it work. Uh, I happened to visit Apple, and they did show me how they're working with it, and it seems to be fairly accurate. Now, I stab myself a couple of times a day to, to measure my blood glucose. I have no idea how this watch does it through my skin, but I really hope it works. Then I can stop all this pricking of my fingers. Okay, so the Dynamic Duo, as you can see, the Apple Watch Health app is a fantastic program by itself. But when combined with the Apple Watch, it's a very complete health tracking app uh, that I refer to as a Dynamic Duo. And, and quite frankly, I, I'm a senior, Sue's a senior, we're, we're both over 70, we wear our watches religiously. All right, I'm done a little early, but I'm, I'm ready for questions if you've got them. Okay, we have a few of them, Jerry, in the, uh, in the chat. So, excuse me, in the Q&A. So the first question is, how do you quickly access your medical ID? 
On the iPhone is the only one I can tell you about, but if somebody right. grabs your, your iPhone and it's locked, if they tap the screen or the home button to activate the lock screen and they try and get into your iPhone, they of course, their face won't be recognized. They don't know your, your code, but the bottom left side of the screen says emergency. And if they touch that, it will bring up that screen where I showed you. It gives you your name, your age, whether you're an organ donor or not, um, your medical condition, your allergies, and so forth. So it's just a matter that they, an EMS person, can grab your phone, try and turn it on, and of course, the thumbprint won't work, the face recognition won't work, they won't know your code, but they will then see a, a button at the bottom of the screen that says uh, medical ID or emergency. And they touch that and they get right into that medical ID. Okay, uh, then here's a question. Can it record swim laps and time? I believe it can. Let me, let me take a real quick look at my what? My... I believe it can. Let's go on to the next question. Uh, swimming, swimming, swimming. Okay. Yeah, you can record. Uh, I don't have that activated on mine, but it's got uh, pool time, uh, lap time, and so forth. And you can go pool length. You can put in, enter the length of the pool. Uh, you can, it's so many, uh, 25 yards or whatever it might be. And then you can hit start and you can do those measurements. Yes. Okay, somebody wants to know where to enter COVID vaccines. Actually, when you get the, the COVID vaccine, if you're sharing your data with your, with your uh, physician, he'll post it for you and it'll just show up under immunizations. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, let me take a real quick look too. You know, sometimes we get into these presentations and we, we talk about so many things that our minds get a little, especially at this age, our minds get a little confused. <laughs> oh, never happens. Hey, yeah, right, right. Uh -huh. Immunizations. Yeah, I'm looking at my immunizations and they're all automatically put in by the my primary physician who gets the information from the drugstore or the library or wherever I've gotten those shots. In fact, I just had my third, I think my third booster shot uh, two weeks ago and it's already posted in here that I've had it. Okay. Uh, okay, somebody has raised their hand. Let me, Jackie, I'm going to allow you to talk. Uh, okay, Jackie, what's your question? Okay, um, you had mentioned something before about the watchman. And um, you, said, you said something about it that was not true. <laughs> um, you said that your wife was told she didn't need a watchman because she has the watch, because she has the watch or the phone or whatever. The watchman stops you from having a stroke and that has nothing to do with the phone or the watch. What your wife probably was told that she didn't need to have was a loop recorder. The loop recorder would do the same thing as, uh, you know, for the, um, as the watch and the phone as far as the atrial fibrillation. I mean, that's, okay. that's why I got my watch was because I used to get atrial fibrillations. But I do have a watchman also and that stops you from having a stroke. So anyone, okay. I just didn't want people to think that, you know, having the watch is sufficient if they really have a major problem with atrial fibrillations. All right, well, thank you for that. She was told that about oh, two or three years ago. So yeah, and thank you for that update. You're welcome. Okay, somebody just put a comment in saying uh, that a low heart rate reading, inconclusive EKG sent me to the doctor and he was then, this is an anonymous person, was then rushed to the hospital for an emergency pacemaker. So the watch effectively saved this person's life. So yes, yes. A, a and I believe that's what my watch said too when I had that PVC. It said inconclusive EKG. 
And that startled me and I immediately emailed that EKG or ECG to my doctor and he had me come right in. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Does anybody else have a question? You can type it into the chat or you can raise your hand and I'll allow you to ask it. I don't see anybody else besides, uh, I'll wait, Barbara. Okay, let me allow Barbara to talk. Okay. Hold on. Okay, Barbara, go ahead. I understand how an emergency medical can get the information from my health app, but if I just wanted to update something, how do I get it quickly without turning my phone over? Well, you can, do you have the phone in your hand you're saying? Yes. Okay, you can go right into the Apple Health app and go and just hit on browse or whatever. And uh, you can go into any of the various categories and change whatever you want to change. I shouldn't say change whatever you want to change, but that's where you can enter certain information. And then it will appear in the emergency piece if the EMS needs it? Correct. Correct. Okay. You'll, go into, the, the, you'll go into the Apple Health app. Uh, Click on uh, the top right corner, which says, uh, I guess it's just your picture. And at that point, you can put in health details, medical ID, and that's where you enter all of this information. And you can go in and change that information. For example, if your medications change, you hit edit and go in and change it. You're the okay. one who controls what goes into your medical ID. Nobody else controls that. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's the medic. Okay, now I see where it is. Okay, thank you. Next question. You said that your primary physician gets the information from where you took the inoculation and that goes directly to your phone? Yes. I, I have my health app. I have my health app shared between the, the Veterans Administration and between my, I, we have a thing, uh, it's an app called My Chart and uh, the doctors put their information into there and it all gets compiled and put on your, your Apple Health app. Thank you. So for example, I had to go to a, a doctor other than my primary care, again, unpleasant subject, but for a colonoscopy a few months ago, uh, when that doctor that did the colonoscopy reported back to my personal physician or my primary physician, he then posted it on uh, the shared record and it became part of my Apple Health record. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, while uh, you were just talking about entering information, I was looking at my health app and uh, you can connect different accounts to it. Like uh, I go to Dr. Figueroa, which a lot of people here go to her and she's with NYU Langone Health. And if, uh, if you can connect that account and then all that information will appear there, anything that they've entered there. Uh, they have right. all kinds of hospitals and doctors that you can find to connect with your with uh, with your with your app. That's exactly right. I actually have my VA primary physician, my primary civilian, and I also have my local hospital sharing my records. So yeah, you can you can share with as many people as you like, and and you can decide what you want shared. And I think, you know, if, if we think about this, this has all come about in the last few years. As we go forward, things are developing so fast that uh, you know, I'm really sold on wearable technology. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Ron Brown, Dr. Ron Brown. He runs a, a web show called Tech for Senior, and he's talked about wearable technology, and, and he and I have, have spoken several times. Uh, it's just a thing of the future. Uh, as we go forward with the next release of, of Apple's iOS, uh, there'll be more changes that, that will be enhancements to what we can do. Okay, I don't, are there any other questions? I don't see anything else. Nobody else has- Questions or comments. Oh, comments, yeah. Wait. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I see. Well, I, Jerry, this was really an excellent presentation. I know I learned a lot 
and perhaps we can go over this in one of the groups because a lot of the this app has so much to it that it's really hard to cover in one session. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and I will, uh, Sheila, I will be sending you the PDF of this presentation. So if anybody wants to review it, they can certainly do that. Oh, that would be great. We'll have, we'll post it on our website, on the Computer pay, Club page. And uh, thank you very, very much, Jerry. This was really- All right, thank all of you. It's been my pleasure. And maybe we'll do another one someday. Okay, very good. Right. Keep that thank in you. mind. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night, everybody.